This presentation is to talk about how you can enhance your Canvas apps with, with custom URLs, some of the different choices that you've got, uh, some of the pros and cons that are uh, linked with them, uh, and there's a bit of, uh, uh, there's something that you can download at the end. Um, so let's get into it. Hopefully everyone can see my screen okay. Um, okay, so um, people have used Canvas apps. I've probably seen this URL uh, before or the, the the like before. Not very easy to remember, pretty messy. You can parse it in terms of the environment name, the application name, and the tenant ID, et cetera. But it's not something that you would remember or be able to type um, by memory. So it sucks, right? If you're trying to share something that's got a, a memorable name uh, or you want that vanity domain to be there, maybe you're going for a merger, that kind of thing, this doesn't really uh, doesn't really cut it. So there's a, a, quite a few different options for actually launching Canvas apps. So you can either launch them directly with the link. Maybe you've sent the link in the Power Automate flow as a, a weekly email that people need to launch and provide their forecasts, that kind of thing. Um, maybe people have uh, marked um, themselves or the company policies uh, have set them to, to bookmark uh, in their browsers. One useful way is if your people use Microsoft Teams quite a lot, then adding it into their Teams rail is quite useful because then the URL is never actually seen by people and it's where people exist when they work day to day. One thing that we've done uh, in the past year is we've added an app inside an Outlook add-in um, for a proactive HR feedback application. It's really good for people to be in the flow of work because they love uh, Outlook uh, and be able to just see an email and give some feedback directly from there. So that's certainly possible with a bit of extra development work. For iOS devices, I find it's difficult to distribute apps um, using the Power Apps app itself, especially if you want to get them on the home screen. But we use Intune Web App for that, which is, which is quite good. You can put the shortcut straight on the home screen of people's devices. Um, the only downside of that is if you need to have the extra capabilities like the camera and that kind of stuff, you might need to actually use the Power Apps app rather than the, the browser itself. What I'm talking about today are these two ones in bold here. So using an iframe uh, and using redirects. So let's jump into that. So sort of pros and cons to, to each of these. If you put your canvas app inside an iframe, then you've got that vanity domain and it's always visible. You've got that control over the end-to-end -end side of things. So maybe your canvas app changes. Maybe you need to move it into a different environment but and the URL is going to change. Actually, your iframe URL can stay the same. There are some function, functions that don't work, which I'll show you shortly. And responsiveness inside iframes is always a tricky one, uh, I found. Also, authentication issues if you're using protected browsers with like third party cookies blocked uh, can be a real problem with iframes. Whereas redirect, you don't get that vanity domain up there uh, by, uh, you know, it's uh, always visible. Um, but the apps will work as they natively designed. The authentication will be seamless, um, but you've got a little bit less control of that uh, that end-to-end -end side of things. So to do iframes or redirects, you need some kind of hosting, right? Whether it is to hold the Canvas app inside the iframe or a web host to be able to redirect uh, redirect that. For the redirection, you could use something like Netscale or you know those those kind of tools. What I'm showing here today is these couple of hosting different options. So SharePoint, really straightforward way that you can put an iframe uh, inside there. Really easy to get going. But the URL path is always going to be company name dot sharepoint dot com slash site slash whatever your site is and whatever your page is. Right? It's not. Uh, yeah, you're almost in the same territory uh, as the apps dot power apps dot com. The other two options I've used uh, as your static, uh, sorry, as your storage static sites. Um, so when you create an Azure storage resource, you can create static sites inside there, um, and as your static web apps. I found that the the storage sites are initially pretty uh, much easier to set up, but if you want to do things like vanity domains and certificates, it can be a little bit more tricky to do. Whereas static web apps are a lot simpler to get those extra bits of configuration there to get your nice URL. Certificates are free. Um, it does require you to connect it to um, a Git repo like GitHub uh, and do the deployments and that kind of stuff from there. But once you've got it set up, it's really uh, really simple to get going. So let's get out of PowerPoint because it's boring. Um, let's get into a demo. So I'm going to show you an example of an iframe, an example of a redirect, and then I'm going to show you a link shortener uh, PowerPoint solution, uh, Power Platform solution that uh, I've uh, built. So let's jump into that. Okay, so 
I've got these static web apps here that I've created. If you haven't used these before, this is the, the configuration. When you first set them up, initially you connect them to your uh, GitHub uh, or other Git repository, um, and then you can configure your custom domain on top. It gives you these these funny named URLs uh, each time, which I always uh, look out for, always uh, make me chuckle a little bit. So I've got one for uh, a redirect here called app.teamas.uk, which is my domain, and then one called iframe.powerapps.teamas.uk. So if I open another browser here, and let's test out the, the iframe one. Just wait for this to load up. And you can see here, it's got my iframe here. I'm also passing in a parameter into this as well. So sometimes parameters are really useful. Um, and you can see the parameter comes up in the title bar at the top here. Now, by default, when you're using iframes with Power Apps, the, the camera control and the microphone control won't work. I'll show you how you can add a little, a little bit of extra code to your iframe to pass that through and to make sure that it works. Um, but one of the things, as I mentioned before, the, the copy function here, so you see I've got some text at the bottom here. If I click copy, that, that will try to copy this text. But you'll see at the top, it's failed, right? So there are certain functionalities which might not work inside our iframe. But the URL looks pretty slick, um, and you're getting those parameters to pass through as well. Let's try the uh, redirect option. So if I hover over it, you can see the URL path there, and I'm passing through a few, few parameters as well into this. Um, but you'll see pretty quickly, it will redirect me to the more native uh, URL path here. So same app, same thing is kind of worked a similar way. But if I click this copy button, I don't get the error message. If I click paste, then you'll see that functionality works. So you can see the difference there between the iframe and the redirect. The redirect will work more natively, but it doesn't look as nice as the, the iframe. So you can really sort of choose what your um, what your benefit or what your uh, you prioritize really. In terms of um, the HTML configuration for, for each of these, so this is the the redirect one. Uh, I'm not from a, a software engineering or development background. I'm from a support operations, and I've kind of come into low code, no code later on in my career. So I had a little bit of help from Copilot and writing some of these things here. Um, but yeah, essentially what this is doing is it's got the the, the app URL here. It's uh, getting the parameters and it's doing a uh, redirect uh, in JavaScript and then having a button if the redirect doesn't work. And then if I show you the uh, iframe option here, very similar. This is the little bit here that if you're doing your iframe and you want your camera and stuff to come through, you need to add these little bits uh, to, to your iframe code to, to make those capabilities uh, work two okay so i thought okay this is kind of cool um but what about if i want to have uh, a url that has all of my links in there and it for it i want it to be really easy to to manage by somebody who doesn't want to go in and manage it in, in azure so azure static web apps is a way to do this without being inside um uh, HTML files or anything like that, what you can do is you can click on uh, routes. And what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to do redirect at uh, the, the static web app layer as opposed to in your um, JavaScript on the client side, essentially. So you can see here, I've got a couple of short codes here. If I click on them individually, um, they'll load up and show me where they're redirecting to. Um, so that's really cool like way of you know having one domain and having slash a short code for each of your apps that people can re be redirected to. But actually updating it in here is for a non-privileged user is a bit difficult, you know, what do all these things mean to, to the uninitiated, right? So what I did was I built um, this solution called the uh, Power Platform Link Shortener. Um, and it's made up of a few different things. It's got a model-driven app. It's got a power automate flow. Um, and it's got a GitHub custom connector. Essentially what it does um, is it allows you to have all those links um, in the model driven app. And each time you update one of them, uh, it will kick off this flow and it will write to the Azure Static Web App. So if I flip over to the Azure Static Web App, essentially that's all that you know that list of routes are is this uh, section here, right? Um, so pretty simple to to um, uh, to parse and things like that in, in, in Power Automate. So what I'll do is I'll I'll create a brand new one in here. I'm just a time as well, so I'll try and get this done as quick as I can. I'm just going to do one to the the BBC website. So I put my name, the code, 
what I want to redirect it to. And what will happen is in the background, that Power Automate flow will trigger uh, and it will go and write, uh, write to, uh, to GitHub. But whilst that's um, whirring away there, you can see some of my other shortcut links. You can see this app.tmas.uk slash escape. There's an escape room that I've built in Power Apps. If you're interested in that kind of thing, go and check out my um, uh, my blog at teamas.co.uk and download that. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite good fun based on a server room at a previous organization I used to work at. Um, and then you can see the other stuff here if you go to short, shortcuts and then this is the, the shout outs app um, that I'd loaded into my environment. But I'm hoping if I go app.teamas.uk, Go to BBC. Maybe it hasn't run quite yet. What happens is when it when it runs in the background, it it will write to GitHub, write to that file, and then the CI/CD pipeline runs in the background. And if I refresh this, it takes a minute or so. So hopefully, let's see the grand reveal. There we go. It's done that redirect there. So this is a, a nice way of. You know, having one domain and having all of your short links there. You know, I'm talking about this for Canvas apps, but actually you can have it for your model-driven apps as well. You've got a bit more control over your model-driven apps, uh, links with the environment URL, but it's still got the dynamics.com. So I've put this slash link, and that's the link manager application that I was showing you there before. So, yeah, that's that. Let me just go back to my presentation quickly. Just a last couple of things I just want to share on there. So these are links. I think David, you put those in the chat, which is uh, which is cool. Um, I've got a, a short link for the the, the repo there too. Um, and yeah, you can get me on all of the social media stuff on uh, at Shami Owens on LinkedIn, Blue Sky, Twitter X, uh, all that kind of stuff at Shami Owens. And uh, yeah, that's me. Hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, if you've got any questions, then yeah, connect with me on one of those.